Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another update and this one might be a little bit longer, but yesterday or actually this week when you end up getting it in church, uh, this past week we talked about reconciliation and it came off of Philemon and I want to go a little deeper into it. I had some great questions afterward and I actually spent a couple hours in the evening reflecting on and, and studying some things in line with that and I want to make sure that I'm clear about some things. The first thing I want to start off with is that forgiveness precedes reconciliation. It's a huge thing. Forgiveness precedes reconciliation. If you seek reconciliation before there is forgiveness, you open yourself up to a lot of conflict, internal and even external conflict. So forgiveness precedes reconciliation. So I have this ver- uh, definition here of forgiveness on my, on my screen here. And it says, forgiveness is the release on the part of the creditor or offended party of any expectation that a debt will be repaid or that an offender will receive punishment for an offense. When describing the removal of an inappropriate offense in this way, the removal does not condone the behavior or s- suggest approval for the offense. So it is a release. So forgiveness is releasing releasing the offense and you cannot it happens sometimes in marriages there's an effort to get into that and with other people you try to just go and reconcile without having first forgiven and you come into it with an expectation that the other person is going to just uh, bow at your feet and say I was so wrong and then when they don't say the words that you're expecting that offense grows deeper, and, it, and it's penetrating. And I'm sure you all know what I, the thoughts, the feelings that I'm expressing right now. If you're human and you've got any time on this earth, you will understand what that is. So that means that you ran into a, a process of reconciliation without having first been first forgiving. So you go, how can I forgive somebody without talking to them? Great question. Thank you for asking. The big thing, if you're a Christian— The big thing is that you first need to go to God with what your offense is. Because God understands, Jesus is our mediator. He understands what it's like to be offended, in a sense. But we're called to go to him and remember the grace that we received. So the grace that we have received, the mercy we have received, the forgiveness we have received— We're called as a basic part of being a Christian to forgive others. Forgive others. And so you might go, well, I can't just forgive right away. Okay. Well, maybe it'll take time. But that is something that you and I, at different times when we go to that, we need to go to God with our offense, not go to the other. Because when we take God out of the equation, we forget how much we've been forgiven and we run to the other person and just expect that they're, gonna, they're just going to say exactly what I need to hear. And frankly, this doesn't happen like that. But when you have forgiven first, and you go, okay, now it's time to talk. So my, my late wife and I, we, we, we came to this thing. We understood that if it was too late in the night, trying to go down that forgiveness train with fatigue and exhaustion and, and you know, the everything just sort of flowing. It's like, this isn't probably going to be good. We'd wait and we'd talk about it in the morning when it was a better opportunity and we had chances to think about it on our own. So, you know, that involves going to God. You know, I still remember sometimes, you know, we would separate in that moment, you know, and I'd go, God, I've just messed this up. You know, would you forgive me, God, for how I've just been irresponsible in this or I, I have been immature I've used my words callously. And so you go to God first and you receive forgiveness. Then you go, well, maybe they said this and I'm upset. No, you just go, God, I, I've been forgiven. I'm going to forgive. And then you go, and once you've forgiven them, you address the person with what you have done in the mix. And this, this might be better for couples or even parents or their kids. Like Instead of it be going, well, you hurt me when? No, it might be better to go, hey, look, uh, no matter how we dice this up, yesterday I I spoke foolishly, and I was a fool. 
and I said this and it was wrong, would you please forgive me? So I had already received forgiveness from God, and this is where it transitions, honestly, to reconciliation. Because if I hadn't, if I'm not going to ask for forgiveness, or I'm not trying to reconcile, it, it becomes squishy. So I have also here a definition of reconciliation. Reconciliate, or restoration, reconciliation is restoration of friendly relationships and of peace where before they had, there had been hostility and alienation. Ordinarily, it includes the removal of the offense, which causes the disruption of peace and harmony. So this was especially so in the relationship of God, in relation of God with humanity, when Christ removed the enmity or the distance, the chasm between God and mankind with the sacrifice. So rest, reconciliation, God forgave, but in the holiness of God, he had to place the guilt on his son, and our sins had to be atoned for. And thanks be to God that if you call yourself a Christian, you have been reconciled to God. And I'm going to hover over a couple of these things. Like Romans 5.10, it says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. So before there was reconciliation, God reconciled us. It's an amazing thing. We were reconciled to him. So now with the son, we're just saved by his life and we're called to live in his life. And so being in his life, walking in the spirit, means that when I'm offended, and it's going to happen. Emotions happen. If you're in relationship, it's going to happen with somebody. I might say a coarse word. I, I've really been reflecting lately that I say sharp things that don't, none of part, no part of me means to be sharp. But I sat back and I stopped and I'm like, I'm sorry. It didn't, I didn't mean it like that. Because I started to put myself in the other person's thought process and I'm going that could sound you know and I can't justify going well they just need to accept it because they know what I mean no I want to be able to be genuine and be loving to everyone I talk to and I'm going to talk to people differently based on who they are and their personality and their temperament everyone needs to be treated with respect and lovingly in different ways and uh, if you have multiple kids you'll know I think by and large you'll know that they respond differently to how you come at them. People are no different. So our pursuit of reconciliation can't just be this on out, all out war unless we've forgiven the folks. So you might have some childhood trauma. You might have some uh, relational tr uh, problems or trauma. You might have abuse in your past or something like that. It is going to be the first work to work out forgiveness between you and God and maybe a trusted brother or sister or counselor to get to the point where you have forgiven them. And that might be where, rest, rec, where, the, where it ends. Maybe reconciliation where you come back and, and everything is together might not happen because the other person might not want it or it might not be healthy to have that. So start off with forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you for holding a grudge. Ask God to soften your heart. Ask God to expose the, the sinfulness inside of you and me so that we're able to go, you know what? I am so thankful for the grace and the mercy of God. And God, because of that, because of how much you've lavished on me, I'm going to lavish that on someone else. Who am I to stand with this offense? God, I forgive them. And, and help me not to pick up that offense again. So I just want to pray with you and uh, just ask that right now, God, I just pray that you would really open the hearts of anyone that listens to this, this podcast, Lord, that anyone would just hear and they know that there is an offense. God, I pray that they would come to you trusting that you're a good, good father. And Lord, trusting that you're, you're not going to give a snake when we ask for um, food, Lord, or a rock or anything like that. You're going to give us a good word. Lord, help us to forgive. And God, at the same time, help us to be ministers of reconciliation. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. Take care.